under the kind of the bad picks I have uh, Miles Bridges, and we'll get on to why that was a bad pick in a little bit. Vernon Carey Jr., JT Thor, Arnoldus Kloboka, Grant Rilla, James Bucknight, Kai Jones. Um, then moving on to OK, we have Nick Richards, Bryce McGowans, Jalen McDaniels, PJ Washington, Devontae Graham. And then moving on to good, we have Brandon Miller, Lamelo Ball, Cody Martin, Mark Williams. So in six years, Chase, and tell me if I've missed anyone, but in six years, I make it that they had three starting level players and maybe two all-stars in Lamelo Ball, Brandon Miller, Mark Williams. Um, for an organization that wants to be known for its drafting, is that a good enough return? I actually do think it is, considering where they were drafting. And I also would I would loop a couple of the guys that you said were okay picks into good picks. I like I think PJ Washington counts as a good pick. I think Nick Richards counts as a good pick for being in 44th overall selection and now being on his second contract, which is a very team friendly deal for who is a backup center that would play for most teams in the league right now. Jalen McDaniels also, I think, would count as a good pick, a guy that also made it to his second contract, and you were able to trade him and recoup more second-round picks, which is what you spent on him to develop him anyway. So was, I feel like that turned out. You also had to send the second-round pick away, though, remembering that deal. It, was, it wasn't just a straight, you traded him for that, that, oh, that thing. True. They sent one away, and then – so it wasn't like straight McDaniels for, for draft value there. But, yeah, yeah that, I mean, that is fair. But still, I, I feel like given the draft contract, position. But is that good? Like, whoo, you didn't bust yes. out. You're not out the league. That That's good. We're saying that's good. You didn't bust out the league. That's where we're drawing yeah. the line of success. De definitely. Most. Do you know how many teams draft guys that, or the, the Hornets included in years past, that draft guys that just bust out of the league entirely? Like, they picked James Booknight, like James Booknight, bad pick, 11th pick that you had to waive before his rookie contract even ended. Kai Jones, bad pick. You traded, especially because you traded picks to get him too. But if you draft a guy 52nd and they play five, six, seven years in the NBA, even if only four of them are for you and your team, I feel like that is definitely a good pick to me. And it shows that like what he said about investing resources and development and that being like the main avenue for building the team, like he did act upon that and he actually made that their main avenue for building the team. Like how good the team ended up being is one thing, but like he did what he set out to do. And especially with like the big swings at the top of the draft, he hit both of them. And that's, that's also, I think the hardest thing any GM can do on the job in the NBA right now is pick in the top five to 10 and get the guy that fits your team with that pick and not have there be players, you know, right before or right after that, you really could use, but you got, you know, you know, Jan Vesely, like the Washington Wizards or something like that. Like there's no pick that just busted out. Like they didn't get Killian Hayes and have to wave him three years later. They got LaMelo Ball. Like they got Brandon Miller. They don't have Scoot Henderson or any of these other guys that aren't having as good of a rookie season as him. So he, I think he accomplished the hardest thing that there is to do. And he hit on the thing that he said he was trying to do. How Pop, good that ended just, up being Pop, is, but is you one, just said, one thing. But. You just said, though, that the team didn't end up being any good. So how is that an accomplishment, that the players they've drafted haven't translated into a good team when that's the foundation of your team building? Like, well, I mean, I, I, they, I think I, they, they haven't been good for many reasons other than the fact that they're drafting good role players with second-round picks. Like, I don't think Cody Martin – or Jalen McDaniels or PJ Washington or Nick Richards or anything are the reasons like why they're bad. They're bad because LaMelo's played 14 games in the last two years and Gordon Hayward missed both play and runs and all these other things. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel, I feel like th these moves in a vacuum are all positive. Like, for the most, I mean, obviously, other than like Vernon Carey and stuff like but that. But the vacuum to me, the va the vacuum of Jalen McDaniels being like a you know back end rotation player, the vacuum's worth two dollars. The vacuum of Kai Jones and James Bucknight busting out the NBA before their rookie contract is worth like eighty dollars, and that's where it's like you can be like, oh, there's eight good ones and five bad ones, but the bad ones are, are, are hurt you so much more than the good ones helped you. Like there's, there's a scale, like a sliding scale of value here. 
and that's where I think like you can look at this and <clears throat> and talk about some of the late round successes. But they had so many second round picks. They they basically had their pick of anybody they wanted in the second round because they've had so many over the last five or six years, and none of them have have really popped in the way that is going to be franchise altering. They're all just complimentary guys. But when you're building your team on draft, and that's the foundation of what you're building, you have to get more than just complimentary guys through the draft. And yes, he did that at the top. When they got, luckily, they moved up. Okay, remember, luckily, both Lamella Ball, Brandon Miller, they moved up in the lottery. That was luck. I didn't give Mitch Kupchak much credit for drafting Lamella Ball. I'm so, I just don't. It was a three-player draft. They picked third. They were going to take Wiseman. And we've said this before. They're going to take Wiseman, Edward to ball. If, if they were second, they would have taken James Wiseman. That was reported everywhere at the time. And they didn't. He was taken by Golden State and he ended up with Lamella Ball. So I just don't give any credit whatsoever for that. The Brandon Miller one is the one for me, which is like that you hang up and say, everyone thought that we should have taken Scoop. And this is looking, we're looking like the smartest people in the room right now. That is the one, in my opinion, uh, that, that I think you point at. Um, so, I, I mean, overall, I I have the draft down as a, like, a B. And I'll say, by the way, I've got a TBC section, like James Naji, Nick Smith Jr., Scotty Lewis, who got a horrible injury, Amari Bailey. It's just too early to tell with those guys. Uh, overall, I had Kipchak down as, I think, a B or a B minus, where did you fall on the draft side of things? I had B plus. So, I mean, ultimately not that much different. I'm a little bit more positive, but yeah, I, I gave him a B plus. plus. And just because, oh, man, and I'm sure sound, we'll, we'll That get... sounds too positive now I say it out loud. I'm changing on the fly. <laughs> I'm going C plus. I'm going so, C all right. Plus. So we, we, he went down from a, a potential B to a firm C plus on the matter of yeah. Like, Seven seconds. I talked through it, and I made a lot of sense to myself. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I, I completely understand that. It, stick with your guns. I, I I totally get it. But there are there his very first draft and trade is yeah. what brings it down for me. And I, we'll talk we'll talk a lot about that. I'm sure because that that will fold into more into the trades section as well. But we, well, so we'll talk about that one. But that is mo- honestly why I gave him a B plus rather than like an A minus or. Some maybe even like an A, and probably not an A, no matter what. But that's that one deal specifically is what bumped it down to me. So we need to talk about this. It was 2018, I believe. Yep. Which was yes. Kupchak's first draft. And Mitch Kupchak traded the uh the eleventh pick where he selected Shy Gilgis Alexander for the LA Clippers, <clears throat> I believe it was. Um mm-hmm. And he traded back to, I think it was 13, was it, for Miles Bridges or 12? I think um, it was 12. Yeah, they just they flipped 12. picks, basically. And in return, they got a 2020 second round pick that became Vernon Carey Jr. And a 2021 second round pick that became Scotty Lewis. You might have just traded a future MVP <laughs> away for Miles Bridges, who not only is like a, like probably a starter, like on a good playoff team but has just missed over a year in 10 games, you know, because of his own personal issues. Um, this could go down. You know that, like, draft night photo of Kobe Bryant in the Charlotte Hornets hat that everyone posts every now and then, and you go, I can't believe the Charlotte Hornets traded Kobe Bryant. This was, in my opinion, worse, because I think that was even done, like, before the draft, I want to say, that Kobe Bryant trade. This one, like, Shea Gilgis was tied to the Charlotte Hornets. Everyone knew Kemba Walker was going on to the last year of expiring deal. They were saying, well, they, like Shea has got the size. He can play with Kemba or he can take over with Kemba if he leaves. It makes too much sense. He was the most mocked guy to Charlotte. And they take Shea and then swap to go for Miles Bridges, which you imagine was probably the guy that they wanted all along. And they only selected Gilgis Alexander. But that is a pretty monumental franchise-changing mistake. I completely agree. That to me, and especially because of the reasoning of it being like, I mean, I think the fans and media from a, their perspective were like, oh, Shea can play with Kemba Walker. He can maybe be like the heir apparent to the point guard position in Charlotte. But 
if I remember correctly, like the narrative, like coming from the Charlotte front office was that they didn't want to, you know, saddle Kemba with like some sort of like backup that was just waiting to take his job at the time. I, that's just why I wanted to kind of phrase it as if I remember correctly, because I wanted to ask you if you had the same perspective on it as well. But I, that's kind of what I remember it being was that they didn't want to like draft Kemba's backup while he was still there or anything like that. And just add another point guard when they already had him because at the time it wasn't like a definite that they were going to move on from him that following off season, which obviously they ended up doing that, which makes it look even worse. But at well, the time, I feel like it wasn't absolutely. a definite, which made it kind of, I mean, at least from their perspective and their reasoning, a more of a question to draft Shea, but clearly that was the wrong decision because he is now an extremely good player. And like you said, like when he was a rookie with the Clippers, like I'm pretty sure they had like, like Avery Bradley and Patrick Beverly and Chris like Paul Lou Williams and not nah, because they traded him for Chris Paul um, to OKC or uh, for, I believe anyway, was the, was right. the rest. yeah, but or no, it wasn't I remember him being in a three guard lineup with Chris Paul at some point. I, that might've been in OKC. It might've been in LA. I can't remember. Which yeah. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Cause they trade. Yeah. They, he ended up in uh in OKC for Paul George, I think is what it was. Yeah. Um, in that sign and trade. I don't who knows, but either way, when he was in Los Angeles as a rookie, he was playing with like a bunch of other guards anyway. So he was essentially in the yeah. same situation he would have been here. But the Hornets just traded Miles Bridges, who as a rookie, you know, was not an overly effective player. I think he played like most of the games that season, but was uh, not a good player at all. It wasn't until his second season that he came on as like a starting caliber player and like a full time. Mm-hmm rotation guy so and then obviously was convicted of a yeah. felony <laughs> a couple of years later and has since come back and looks like a much different lesser player than he was when he left so that one to me is a, a huge negative because even the at the mark. time Shea looked like a better player and especially now we know that to be true and it wasn't like say it wasn't like Kemba was signed for four years, you know. Right. And you go, well, why would you draft a backup point guard? That was not the case at all. Uh-